So you sold for 30 times your EBITDA. Correct. That is yeah. your strongest negotiating point, whether you're selling or buying. And Took a Suleiman one, to, one uh, side. Theo Fafitis. Theo Fafitis, yeah. the other side. I'd like to introduce you to my friend uh, Andrew, who has recently had two very successful exits. One of them was at a 30 times multiple. And when he was telling me this, I thought, well, you might like to know how to sell a business at a 30 times multiple. Would that be of interest to you? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Okay, just checking. He's also bought businesses, multi-million pound deals uh, as well. So I thought I would ask him to come and share some of his uh, experience and knowledge and wisdom with you. So please welcome to the front of the room, Andrew Scott. 2012, I had a, a group of companies involved in marketing industry and data industry. And um, I wanted to get those businesses into a much wider uh, audience. And I looked at the UK media for businesses at the time and I realized there wasn't anything of any real substance. So 2012, I launched a publishing and media company called uh, Business Leader Magazine, and we scaled it very quickly. We invested heavily in the business. 2013, we launched the Business Leader Awards, um, and then the Scale Up Awards, GoTech Awards. Last month, we managed to complete the sale of the business to uh, Richard Harpin, who's the owner of Homeser PLC, which is a, a four billion pound business. His interest in that business was the scale and the connections of business leader, the circulation, who we were connected to, and the audience that we had. Business Leader magazine, something I was very familiar with. I would see it in airports a lot as well. You've got yes. some great distribution. Yeah. Did I have an article in there? You I did, I did. did. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, we featured Jonathan. Yeah. yeah, and I went to one of your awards. Yes. Uh, one of, yeah, this was an incredible awards dinner. Uh, first of all, I was sitting at your table, which I wasn't expecting to. Yes, and took a Suleiman um, one, and, uh, one uh, side. Theo Fafitis, yeah. the other side. I mean, yeah. you know, you attracted some really big names so, yeah. to, to your yeah. events. Yeah. Now, do you think that contributed to the overall value and perceived value of the business? Yeah, absolutely. Somebody mentioned earlier their superpower was PR. Um, and, I, and I think that's one of the one of the ways to really scale the business and to uh, maximize its value. So the value to business leader wasn't necessarily the size of the business in terms of its revenue. Uh, that was a secondary consideration. The value of the business was the network, who we were connected to, and how the brand was perceived. We built a, a reputation and we built a lot of credibility over a number of years by just connecting and working with those people, both in the UK and US. So you will yeah. see every business that a private equity firm is about to sell win awards Absolutely. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, ha have some celebrity sponsors and, and yeah. all of those things. Yeah. And you feel that was the major factor? It, it, it absolutely was. I mean, I had a, a phone call from Richard um, to say he was in an airport, he was reading a copy of our magazine, and could he get together and discuss it? So he was a, a reader of the magazine, he, saw it in an airport, yes. and thought, we should own that magazine. Yeah, so he had, he had connected with us previously. He, he was a, a judge for uh, one of our awards, Scale Up Awards. He was a speaker at our event. So we had built a relationship with him over time. Buying a business is just so rewarding. And I've put together a free training showing you exactly how I do it. If you look in the video description below this video, there is a link. You click the link, you're taken through to the training, watch the training, and I'll show you exactly how to buy a business successfully. How many numbers can you share with us? Maybe maybe the circulation, that would, we can yes. do circulation? Yeah. So, yeah, what was yeah. the circulation so, yeah, at the so time? The, the circulation of the magazine, we had about 80,000 readers um, in, in the print magazine and uh, about a quarter of a million um, online and uh, e-newsletter subscribers. So per, it's quite, per well, month fairly, is that? Per month. Per, per, per issue. month. Okay. Yeah, that's, Ex that's it. Excellent. How big was the team? How many staff were employed working on Business Leader, whether online or offline? Well, that, that's the interesting point. So within our group, we, we've uh, about 110 people, but within Business Leader itself, we only had 12 people. <laughs> so, so, and it was interesting. interesting. Business Leader had this gigantic reach and impact and influence and credibility. I mean, we were, we were getting thousands of inquiries every, every week um, from people wanting to be featured in the magazine. Um, but, but actually, it was the smallest business within our group. So you sold for 30 times your EBITDA? Correct, yeah. 
everybody's got their own agenda, everybody's got their own reason to buy uh, a business. You know, it's not always about what appears obvious. So in that particular transaction, there was very much uh, a desire for a hugely successful uh, entrepreneur to be able to reach the entrepreneurial world. You, you were of distribution. Mass. Ex distribution, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, were, you, were his, you were his media. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Tell us about the sector that you've bought in. Over the last probably 20 years, I've bought seven businesses. And, and actually, they've been in a whole range of sectors. I was involved in a home improvement company, and I had the opportunity to buy that. We scaled that business. It was a, a small business of, of around a million turnover. And we grew that to 12 million in three years and sold it to Masco, which is a US Fortune 500 company. Um, and then I, I got the taste for that and I, I did it again and again and again. So I've, over the years, I've bought publishing businesses and I've bought a number of home improvement companies. Like Jonathan says, it, sometimes it's successful and sometimes it's not. And part of that um, actually depends on whether you want to be, uh, how you see yourself as whether you're an investor or whether you're an operator. Um, and as Jonathan said, you know, he, he prefers doing the, the, the deal and strategy and not necessarily the operational side. Um, and it's interesting, I've done both. I've acquired a business where I've been the operator and I've acquired a business where I'm purely the investor and I've put in an operator. Um, and, and both of them have got very different challenges. And which do you prefer? I enjoy both, so it depends on the business. Where it's a heavily operational or labour-intensive business, for example, home improvement companies, I prefer to be the investor, bring in an MD um, to, to run it, recruit uh, an MD. The, the downside of that, obviously, is you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. And um, you know, uh, on one occasion, I backed uh, an entrepreneur who wanted to go out and buy uh, a group of home improvement companies one at a time uh, and I backed him and the first one was really successful. He went on to acquire the second one and in that process, in that time frame, the first one started to struggle because the, the process took way too long. And while well, the, he was... The, what, the acquisition, acquisition process? Acquisition, yeah. The whole acquisition process needs to be slick. Absolutely. Yeah, it needs to yeah. be as fast as you can do it without rushing or skimping on the DD but you need to have a process, without a doubt. That particular transaction took six months, um, which was very painful, and as a result of that, the core business, the original business that we had bought, suffered hugely because the operator was so involved in, in mm -hmm. the new business. Um, and equally, during that period, the, the team within the new business became very demotivated because there was a new owner joining the business. He had his own ideas. So actually, both businesses suffered um, hugely in that. We bought um, a home improvement company in Wolverhampton three years ago. Um, we ran the business successfully for about a year. Um, six months later, we then acquired a, a, this, the second business, put them together, um, and I put in an operator to run those businesses. So um, in the end, um, back to what you were saying, actually the first one didn't work out. The second one um, grew uh, extensively. That, that had um, rapid growth, but the first one really struggled. When buying a business, you need a great lawyer on your team. So why not use mine? His name is John Andrews and his details are on the screen. And what would you say if there was one lesson to share with everyone? What would that lesson be? Put in a system to allow you to continue to run your core business and not take your eye off the ball in your core business. You've been very busy recently because you sold Business Leader magazine. Yeah and you also sold a conference and, conference business. and, and yes. seminar business. Yes. We, we operated um, a, a conference and events business in the construction sector. I ran a, sort of events like this, probably 500 to 1,000 people, um, industry-specific events. We were approached, uh, again, this was a, a brand recognition. We, we became an expert in certain sectors, uh, and as a result of that, uh, a media, very large media and publishing company came along and, uh, and, and acquired us uh, about four weeks ago. Uh, so that was Mark Allen Group. And it was really interesting. I first approached Mark Allen Group two and a half or three years ago, um, and they said, no, we're not interested in your sector. Two or three years later, their, their position had changed and they have become very acquisitive. So they then re-engaged and said, yes, absolutely. How do you maximize your value 
and how do you make the sales process as smooth as possible? Because it is a roller coaster yeah. emotionally, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's not just the seller that becomes emotionally involved. You as a buyer can sometimes be emotionally involved because you're so invested over a period of time and you're working on it and you get passionate about it and you're excited about it. And then sometimes information appears and, and it, it makes you question what you're looking at, but you go ahead with it anyway. So one of the things I would absolutely say is remove emotion from the process and, um, and be prepared to walk away right up to the last minute. Well, this is the thing, whether you're a buyer or a seller, always yeah. be prepared to walk away. That, that is, and have options. Uh, yeah, exactly. that, that is yeah. your strongest negotiating point, whether you're selling or buying, is not to care.